Chaos. Order versus chaos is a rather fundamental concept, both in reality and in fiction, but rarely is it so blatantly utilized than in the Warhammer 40k universe, where a significant faction of hostile forces are literally called the forces of chaos. Chaos is sometimes conflated with the word evil, but at least in 40k's case it is a bit more primordial than that. Chaos in 40k covers both the limitless ocean of energy within the alternate warp dimension, as well as the entities created or corrupted by this energy. This video won't go into too many specifics about the main gods of chaos, but I want to provide a general overview of such an important part of 40k. Chaos, in a nutshell, is change in its most fundamental form. It's inherently unpredictable, and does not obey any of our laws of time, space, or physics. The massive ocean of energy called chaos fills the dimension known as the immaterium, a turbulent realm that exists parallel to the real dimension. The warp was not always so turbulent and violent, however, and in ancient times it was more peaceful. It was still certainly dangerous, but not nearly as corruptive or violent as it is in the 41st millennium. The ancient race known as the Old Ones managed to build tunnels through the warp, bypassing the inherent dangers of chaos while skipping across the stars. The Old Ones seem to have a far greater understanding of the warp than any modern species, as they also made new species with inherent connections to the warp, such as the Krork and the Eldar. As time went on, and more and more sapient creatures came into existence, their emotions, thoughts, and beliefs manifested in the warp. These concepts, many of them dark, such as feelings of anger, fear, despair, pride, and so on, become part of the ever-churning, swirling mass of chaos within the warp. Over time, the warp continued to become a more violent and, well, chaotic dimension. Eventually, certain emotions or thoughts began to coalesce and join together, concentrating into specific entities. These entities gained sentience, becoming the gods of chaos. The emotions of anger, rage, hate, violence, and bloodshed became Korn, the blood god. Physical corruption, fear of mortality, self-delusion, and despair became Nurgle, Lord of Decay. Feelings of ambition, intrigue, pursuit of knowledge, evolution, and change became Zinch, Changer of Ways. Later on, the fall of the Eldar and their plunge into lust, greed, excess, and pleasure gave birth to Slanesh, Prince of Pleasure. There are other minor gods of chaos that represent other emotions or thoughts, but these four make up the majority of sapient feelings in the 40k universe. The chaos gods have an interest in the material realm, but take far more interest in battling one another for supremacy. This is an eternal conflict, because if any one chaos god won over the others, the warp would return to its original state of calmness, causing chaos to cease to exist. This eternal war is played out through countless plots and schemes, and involves untold amounts of subordinates, born from both chaos and from the material world. The most numerous of these are the demons, entities created by a chaos god using the energy of chaos as an extension of their will. Demons come in an unfathomable variety of forms and sizes, most often correlating to a specific chaos god. The lowest form of demon is little more than a feral beast, often serving other demons or even certain corrupted mortals. Lesser demons are the foot soldiers of chaos, numerous beyond measure, and make up the bulk of each chaos god's army. Although they possess their own intelligence, they generally exist only to serve their master. The strength of a demon can vary wildly based on many factors, 
but any given lesser demon is likely stronger, faster, and more durable than any normal human. The lesser demons of Korn are far more deadly in direct combat, while the demons of Zinch are more capable of driving the weak-minded to insanity. Above the lesser demons are the greater demons, far more powerful than their lesser brethren, and they often act as leaders of war bands. Greater demons are avatars of horror and destruction, capable of slaughtering hordes of opponents and destroying armored vehicles at will. It's said that a greater demon of corn could only be bested one-on-one -on -one by a Primarch, and the greater demons of Nurgle are capable of coding entire worlds in unimaginable diseases. Demons are created from chaos, and therefore can only exist where chaos can exist. This means that demons cannot simply invade real space as other sapient creatures might. Since the material realm and the warp overlap one another, there are times where the veil between the two will weaken in certain places, allowing chaos to enter real space. These are called warp rifts, and sometimes these occur naturally, other times they are manufactured by either the chaos gods or by corrupted mortals. These rifts can take many different forms, and last anywhere from mere moments to centuries. Well, inside of a warp rift, a chaos demon can interact with the material realm, although they could be weakened or killed if separated from it. A demon in real space cannot normally be killed in the same sense as a living creature, but can only be banished back to the warp to regain their strength. To truly kill a demon requires a specific ritual, relic, or massive amounts of psychic energy. The utterance of a demon's true name can also weaken it, making it easier to be destroyed or banished. Warp storms are similar occurrences to warp rifts, where part of the warp bursts forth into real space. Warp storms are extremely volatile and destructive, lasting for similar periods as warp rifts. Ships caught in a warp storm might end up blown thousands of light years off course, or might emerge finding that centuries of time have passed, or might be trapped in the warp completely. Large warp storms can easily isolate a section of the galaxy from the rest of it. Demons aren't the only forces that make up the armies of chaos, however, as chaos is a corruptive energy, and many sapient individuals in real space have fallen into its grasp. The gods of chaos are always looking for those that are likely to succumb to feelings of hatred, desire, ambition, fear, excess, and so on. Humans, of course, are at the forefront of those that fall to chaos, including normal humans, psychers, space marines, and even primarchs. Demonic possession is possible, either through a host willingly offering themselves or a demon forcefully taking over a susceptible mind, usually a psyker. A powerful, uncontrolled psyker that succumbs to chaos becomes known as a rogue psyker, acting as essentially a living bomb for the forces of chaos. Numerous chaos cults operate across the galaxy, with cultists secretly working to bring down the Imperium from within. These cultists will attempt to convert entire populations to their side, eventually opening warp rifts to allow for full demonic incursions. Many soldiers of the Imperial Guard will succumb to chaos, becoming part of the Traitor Guard and taking their weapons, equipment, and vehicles with them. Traitor Guardsmen will often fight alongside demons and mutants. Members of the Adeptus Mechanicus also turn coat, becoming part of the Dark Mechanicum. Being part of the Dark Mechanicum allows them to fully dabble in previously forbidden technology, and they produce many infernal machines for the forces of chaos. Notable among these are the Traitor Titan Legions, massive titans that have been corrupted and mutated by chaos to make them even more formidable. Most notable among the fallen human forces are the Chaos Space Marines, or the Traitor Legions, fearsome space marines that have been mutated and enhanced by chaos. 
These first came about during the events of the Horus Heresy, when the Primarch, Horus, succumbed to chaos and swayed many of his brothers and their legions to his side. The traitor legions possess a deep-seated hatred for the Emperor, the Imperium, and their counterpart, Loyalist Space Marines. New Chaos Space Marines are continually created in a process similar to the one that Loyalist Space Marines use, although it is far more brutal. Chaos Space Marines' biology and power armor are both mutated and enhanced by Chaos, fusing together in a horrific amalgamation. Chaos Space Marines possess none of the restraint that is beat into typical Space Marines, making them especially fearsome foes. Those Chaos Space Marines that prove themselves to be exceptional followers of a Chaos God might be granted favor, becoming a Chaos Champion, a leader of squads of Chaos Space Marines and Demons. This position is accompanied by further mutations. Those Chaos Champions that continue to prove themselves to their Chaos God might be given the rare honor of throwing away their humanity completely and becoming a demon. These are known as Demon Princes, aspects of Chaos that possess far more power than a mortal could ever dream of. They are generally placed in charge of entire legions of mortal Chaos followers, or potentially even a legion of demons, although greater demons usually regard them as inferior due to their mortal origin. The Demon Primarchs are the greatest of these Demon Princes, the brothers of Horus that joined him in his heresy feared and respected by all followers of Chaos. If a Chaos Champion fails to impress their Chaos God, they may instead become a Chaos Spawn, a horribly mutated mass of flesh, driven insane by Chaos. Although humans typically are the focus of Chaos Corruption, they aren't the only species that can be tainted. There are a number of entire species that have completely fallen to Chaos, wiping away their previous history, such as the Ceruthi. Most of the other notable species in 40k are largely protected from Chaos Corruption, for one reason or another. The Eldar are extremely cautious of any Chaos intrusion. The Dark Eldar sacrifice other souls to prevent Slanesh from feeding on theirs. The Tau barely have a presence in the Warp. The Tyranids Hive Mind protects them and orcs have both the Wog and their loyalty to Gork and Mork. There are, of course, individual exceptions for most of these cases, as Chaos is relentless and ever-present. The forces of Chaos are yet one more constant threat in the universe of 40k, determined, powerful, and without mercy. Chaos is more than simply a physical threat, though, as one must be guarded mentally and spiritually as well, in order to protect themselves from corruption. Further videos will take a look at each of the main Chaos Gods, as well as a closer look at Chaos Space Marines, but this should provide a good starting point for the armies of the Immaterium. The Imperium of Man has put up a steadfast defense against their traitorous brothers and their Dark Lords, but perhaps in the end, Chaos will indeed reign.